What is better and which one you should use, Runway ML or Premiere Pro? I have spent hours to try different footage on different examples to prove which one is better. Here's my conclusion. A little teaser, some of the features are amazing in Premiere Pro or Runway. I don't know, keep watching. And some of the features are very bad. All right, let's have a look. Let's start with the frame interpolation. I'm going to go to my runway. I'm going to go to generate videos and I have frame interpolation right there. So what you have to do in terms of frame interpolation is to have picture A and then picture B, start point and then end point, meaning there's going to be a certain transition in between. So it's you can have a flower, which is basically growing, and then the end result of flower being fully grown. So I'm going to start and I'm going to do the picture of orange. So this is how it's going to be in the beginning. And then the end point is orange, which is peeled. And you can see that I can upload even more images to have like to show the progress, which I'm not going to do. It's going to be pretty straightforward right now. You can set up clip duration. So I'm going to do like four seconds, let's something like that. And I'm going to generate, right? And basically this is going to take very short time to be generated. And I'm going to have a look how it looks like. In the meantime, I'm going to go to my Premiere and I'm going to import the same two images of an orange. I'm going to place them in my timeline and essentially what is happening in terms of frame interpolation is this is just a morph cut, right? Just a morph cut. If you don't know what is a morph cut, that's actually developed with the algorithm and it's really interesting. You can place it in between the clips, always in between the clips. Of course, it works. Basically, it was designed to work to hide the jump cut. So it needs a face to work properly. I don't have a face, I have an orange. So let's see what it does, because that's the basically only way that comes to my mind, how to create interpolation. So let's play it. As you could see, the whole image shifts. So also the edges of the frame, and it doesn't look very good, to be honest. Like it does the job, but it doesn't, it doesn't show the progress, right? So I'm not really impressed by this. If I go back to my runway, by the way, you have to use it on Google Chrome only. I'm going to go to runway and now I'm going to play the result of my interpolation. That's pretty good, to be honest. So I have my orange, it's peeled and what I, oh, the only thing that changed really was the orange. So it starts peeling off and just make sure if you want to use this, take a picture in the same environment with the same light and in the same spot. That's crucial to make this effect look really good. So we have Runway 1, Premiere Pro 0. Let's have a look at slow motion. Slow motion is pretty straightforward. As we know, as videographers, we need to increase frame rate to create that nice, smooth, slow motion. However, we can also fake it, right? So I'm going to go in my footage and we're going to work with this walking. Okay. So this is nice in filmed in Scotland. It's a little shaky and it's in 4k. So it's kind of massive, um, even though for 10 seconds. So what I want to do, I want to slow this down. Okay. So the problem here that we can experience is this frame when she goes and there's a sun go in basically right there. So when you create any kind of fake slow motion, this could particularly cause some issues because you have interference with a lot of light. There's like overexposure in there, which is artistically amazing, but not so good for faking slow-mo. The simplest method of slowing something down in Premiere Pro is to use speed and duration option. Command R, Control R as a shortcut or right click and go to speed and duration. So I'm going to actually push it a little bit here. So I'm going to use 30%. And of course, for optimal results, you can use 50%. And if you want to push it, you can use 25%. Um, but let's see how it looks like. So we have three options here in time interpolation. We have frame sampling, frame landing and optical flow. Frame sampling, as it suggests, either creates or removes a frame to create a smooth motion. Could be effective, we can see how it looks like. 
Frame blending just basically puts transitions between the frames already existing. And the best solution in majority of cases is optical flow. Optical flow generates new frame. It doesn't copy it, it doesn't remove it, it generates new frames. Pretty much the combination of the previous two. And that's the most effective one. So I'm going to actually go ahead and try optical flow right away and see how it looks like. I'm going to hit OK. Of course, the video is now longer, but let me actually show you how it looks like. But if you know something about Premiere Pro, you know that optical flow cannot be seen and viewed before it's rendered. So you have to go to sequence, render in and out, wait for this to happen, and then we can play it. Going back to runway, I'm going to go to edit videos and we're going to go into this super slow motion option. And I already have this clip somewhere. So I'm going to drag this clip on here and then I'm going to use the same settings. So basically I'm just going to do 30%, right? That's going to be the same thing. Now I'm going to process and wait for this and we can compare. Runway is done. So let's have a look at runway. I'm going to play this. I can actually skip a little bit ahead. Wow, that looks great. There was no kind of e iffy frame. Wow, that actually that looks amazing, to be honest. Like this is 25 frames per second. You guys like you have to understand this is amazing. And that sun, when it hits the overexposure, it doesn't do anything wrong with it. Okay, that's pretty impressive. Premiere Pro is still doing it. All right, the moment of truth. Let's play this from a, almost the same moment. So far, so good. Oh, wait. Okay, here we have a problem here. Here we have a problem here. Wow, my English is very sophisticated after my holiday. All right. Did you see this? This is this is right here. This optical flow is just got lost. Basically just messed the whole thing up. This is an example which is really difficult to deal with and that's why I'm doing this to show you a really big differences um, when it comes to details. If I actually am going to do not optical flow but frame sampling, I need to render it again and wait if that makes it any better. Because optical flow is a combination of frame sampling and frame blending, I don't expect this to be any better, to be honest. But I know you guys are going to ask in the comments, like, oh, you know, I want to see the other two options. So there you are. It is not as... There's no kind of like iffy stuff and glitchy stuff. However, it doesn't run smoothly. Right, so you can see kind of like jump cut between the frames, so it's not smooth. And this is what happens when we really lower the speed when we have low frame rate already and we're pushing it. So then it kind of creates this strange, strange motion in that. So definitely I would not want to use this option. I would rather go to runway. And then finally, let's do the frame blending and see if that makes it any better again render in and out and let's have a look okay so now we have frame blending okay this is terrible this is horrible okay that's not good at all all right so and my computer is like oh my god let me crash okay the conclusion is runway 2 premiere pro 0 let's move to blur faces so runway is presenting us with this option which is called blur faces and this is so very very simple right so just put the video in and then let me do something like this okay and let's see the blur face and it's just one face so it should be pretty easy you know and simple to do for runway so let's see how it's actually dealing with it let me know in the comments what do you think Number one, that I'm going to be like Donald Trump. That looks horrible, horrible. Um, okay, that was the worst, worst impression. Anyway, 
I don't know how they can think this looks good. This is this is a joke. Like, what's going on? Why this is a rectangle on our face? Our face is not rectangle. Why would you put rectangle on the face? Jeez. I can increase the padding. It's just going to make it worse. Okay, this is the worst tool I have ever seen online. I swear to God. Like, <sighs> okay, that's that's not even close. That's literally like, I said 2-0 to Premiere. No, this is 2-1. Okay, Premiere Pro is hitting this. So if I play this, look at this. I'm going to play it. I just saw her. What's the point of blurring the face if I just saw her? Oh my goodness. So it not only doesn't look good, but it also doesn't do a very good job. I'm very outraged, okay? Let's go in Premiere Pro and put the same clip, same clip in here, okay? What are we gonna do? I'm gonna go to the effects. Gonna throw Gaussian Blur on it. Actually, it's called ellipse, you know, our face is rounded. So I'm going to do like the ellipse, something like this. I'm not going to polish it yet, but let me just start from the beginning. Think this is real time speed. Okay, track it forward. Let's see what happens. By the way, it looks better. I can also increase the feather to kind of blend it with the background. It looks good. It's quick to to create. I mean, I really don't know what to think about. Looks crap. And doesn't work. Oh my goodness. I would not, I would be ashamed to even put this out there, like on the internet. Like, we can blur faces. What? Only for 80% of the video. For the rest, 20% of the video, we're gonna show you all the faces. All right, let's see how this worked. Tracking, automatic tracking. Da -da 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 -da. It's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Jesus Christ, this took me like 20 seconds. And again, I could make it so much nicer, to be honest, so don't mind. I can nicely blur it with the background. And it's going to look so much better. I can also blur it a little less. Amazing, right? Oh my God, Premiere Pro. I would even give you two points, you know, but I'm not going to cheat. But I would definitely give you like even two points for this, because this is amazing comparing to Runway. All right, let's move on. What about blurring the background? Well, I feel like Runway is gonna is gonna win here. I'm gonna do remove. Oops. Okay, remove background. Going to remove background on Runway. Well, I can already tell you. I mean, this is this is gonna win. It's so easy to use, and basically pretty straightforward. So if I'm literally bring the video in here. Could not be easier. So obviously they didn't put so much time into blur faces, but they put so much time in this because it can create a an highlight selection and it can also generate kind of like the outline of what you want to do. So it's pretty accurate. I love it. Okay, this is now all done. What I want to do, I want to blur background. Now I'm going to separate the background from the foreground and I'm going to blur the back. I'm not even going to try to attempt this in Premiere Pro. This will require masking around her. And of course, if she moves, then I have to remask everything and just basically start over and go frame by frame. So this is pretty good. So I can push it. Of course, this looks totally fake, but you, you know, you can see where I can push it and it's going to look good. And actually, when people are gesturing, it's going to follow them. It's definitely a win for runway. To be honest, if I want to use a different footage, I can literally just use different footage. You can you can trust me on this. Let me just see if I have for you non-believers, I can use the footage, yeah, this one. Where everything changes, I also kind of gesture, so it's a little bit more complicated. And because I'm not going to do this in Premiere Pro, I'm going to spend time now to show you how this works. Just going to Highlight a bit more. I mean, that's fine. Blur background. This is already edited video, so it may be a little tricky, but it's still gonna do really well. By the way, my t-shirt looks amazing, right? With my logo. Like, this is one of the things. Like, I focus on the content and sometimes I look like an idiot, but it's fine. Um, okay, so I can blur the background. 
Okay, I can push it, and then when I play One it... One thing which is super important for good SEO, search engine optimization, is you don't have any broken links on your website. And trust me, if you think you don't, you do. I can solve... Okay, so you could see, like, my hand kind of jumped. So that was the frames, like, remasking. But I pushed it kind of far. Go. Search engine optimization. E that looks actually much better. Yeah, okay, so when I pushed it above my 28 on the blur, it kind of did this weird jumping of the hand. So, like, remasking. If I go like 28, for good SEO, search engine I don't really see it. Okay, so there's a certain number that you can push it to. But of course, after a certain number, depending on the example and video, you cannot push it anymore. It's going to look bad. So, of course, you need to find out for each example how much you're going to push it. That's it. So, yeah, I'm not even going to attempt this for Premiere Pro. So it's free to... Even if I give it two points for blur faces, runway basically won. Because I'm not going to cover all the tools that are possible in runway, that's another video. But if I have a look at editing videos and remove black blur background, amazing. Remove objects works really well, depending on the footage, but it can just create wonders. This is impossible in Premiere. Color grade you can do in Premiere, but... Okay, so in terms of color grade, I could just say that... Maybe this one is not ideal for, for example, log footage. So color grade is more like if you have footage that you kind of want to change the feel, you can use color grade in runway to add some spice to it. But of course, Premiere Pro becomes much better. So, I mean, maybe it is a tie in the end. Oh. Scene detection works exactly the same like in Premiere. And in terms of motion tracking... Um, it's going to be a point for runway as well. So motion tracking in Premiere is basically non-existent. It doesn't work well. So again, runway kind of wins. And let me see the scene detection. Because I actually, this could be the decisive moment, right? I have this edited video right here. So basically finds your shots and splits them. This should be no rocket science. So, I mean, in Premiere it works amazingly. And very quickly. So I'm actually kind of curious how it's going to do here. And maybe we can decide which one is better. But of course, Runway is going to be better for some on some occasions. And Premiere is going to be better on some. Um, I mean, I didn't count remove objects. I think... I don't want to say Runway wins because Premiere is amazing. But for some occasions, yes. By the way, I'm not good at counting, so if that video didn't make sense, comment below. Okay, that's literally how it is in Premiere. It detects of every of your cut, each of your cut, and then splits those cuts. And you can't even reorganize them. Okay. Mm, you can export them separately, but okay, that's probably point for Premiere. Is it a tie? Let me know in the comments. Is it a tie or what wins, actually? I would like to know what you think. And is Runway paid package worth it? If you want to generate videos, yes. If you don't want to generate videos, you can stay on free version. And basically just, you can only have three projects. So we just keep deleting those projects once you're done with them. And you can just, re you know, reuse it and continue with this. So... Definitely. I mean, I've generated some videos. I will make a video about it, I think, as well. Let me know in the comments if you want me to. Um, generating videos can be kind of, you know, it's not as great as generating images because obviously it has a frame rate, so there's much more work to it, but it can be a lot of fun. It's definitely in early stages, so we never know where it's going to go, but it's very exciting. Let me know in the comments what do you think about AI in general, and are you worried as a video editor, you're going to lose your job or something like that. So yeah, let's have this discussion. Subscribe, like this video, comment and share it. And, you know, I'll see you next time.